Welcome 9th, 10th, and 11th grade students and parents and guardians to our underclassmen info night. I am Ms. Dean. I am a school counseling intern that is working with the counseling department this year through Mercer University. I'm going to be doing the first part of this presentation. So we're going to start off by talking about all of our school counselors and how they serve 9th through 12th graders. Um, so the school counselors are split up by last names. So Mr. Peppers has last names A through E. Ms. Bruce has last names M through F through K. Ms. Watson has last names L through Q. And Ms. Nelson has last names R through Z. And I don't have a specific last name. I can see any student, all students. Um, we also have in our career center, Ms. Long, and then principal, Mr. Maxwell, and um, assistant principals, Mr. Noblet, Mr. Martin, Ms. Rayberg, and Ms. Smith. Um, we also have a records clerk that's located in our school counseling office, um, Ms. Sheets, and then we also have our registrar, Ms. McElroy. So when it comes to school counselors um, and how we help students, so we can help students with any personal or social um, counseling that they might need. Um, we can help them with testing, talking to them about graduation requirements, different comp conferences that they could be interested in, um, scheduling their schedule for high school. So if they need a class change or just talking about, um, you know, maybe what pathway they would like to do, um, credit recovery, hospital homebound setup if they're in need of that, any 504 plan meetings um, and determinations of whether a student needs a 504 plan, um, scholarships, recommendation letters, admission information to colleges, and then helping them kind of figure out um, maybe some careers that they might be interested in. Uh, we can also put them in contact with any community resources, whether that be counseling or anything like that. Uh, dual enrollment advisement, uh, college and career planning. Um, we can do that through senior meetings, junior meetings, and we're also going to be doing that through minute meetings and also help with Georgia Futures. So the way that a student can see a school counselor is through our online appointment schedule. Um, so you can go into Google and type in a Winderboro High School Counseling and it should up, pop up with a link. And um, the picture is an example of what it would look like. So you would just make an appointment with the counselor. You can pick the date, time, um, and all of that and the counselor that you would like to see and then it sends a notification to your phone and um, to us and then that um, appointment is on the books and parents or guardians if you're interested in contacting your child's school counselor you can go uh, contact them through phone or email so if you're in need of a records request um, those can be made online from the appointment schedule or so what we just talked, what we just saw in that picture. Um, so Ms. Sheets can help you with transcripts, enrollment letters, social security paperwork, auto insurance, and any withdrawals. Um, that is Ms. Sheets' email down below and um, she can be very helpful with all of that information. So some upcoming events that we currently have. So we have a Peach State tour. Um, that's going to be events from Augusta University, Georgia State University, Georgia Tech, and um, University of Georgia. The link to sign up is located below. Um, so it's just going to be a great way for those students to kind of be able to reach out to some of those colleges. Um, they're going to um, have virtual events as well. Uh, so that could be very interesting for any student that could be interested in any of the colleges that are going to be attending that. And then also if students are uh, ex registering for an AP exam, the deadline for students to register is November 8th, and that's going to be for students who are taking fall only or year long AP classes. So again, November 8th will be that deadline and after that late fees will apply have been doing grade level advisement meetings. So we've been going into each grade's um, advisement classes and giving them a presentation very similar to this, but a little bit more catered to the specific grade that they're in so that they can get the information that's best for them. Um, another important thing would be a conversation worth having with your teen presentation. Um, we have multiple professionals who are coming to speak on suicide awareness. Um, 
on October 21st at 6.30. It is going to be a Zoom meeting. That will be a great one to learn about the, for you and your, for parents and students um, to learn about suicide prevention and suicide awareness. We also have an apply to college week, which is geared towards seniors, um, but definitely a good experience for the underclassmen to um, kind of see and get to get excited about what they could be looking forward to when they're a senior. On apply to college week, so it's going to be November 15th through the 19th. It's going to be week long activities to encourage and excite students about applying to college. We'll have college admissions panels, so um, people from various colleges in Georgia are going to come and answer all of the students' questions about what the process is like or anything like that. We'll also have a college student pan panel, so Winder Barrow graduates are going to come and talk about their experiences and answer any questions that the students may have about that process. We're going to have apply to college days. Um, that's mostly for seniors, um, but definitely a good experience, like I said, for the underclassmen to kind of see what the process is like and um, see what apply to college week um, can help them do when they're a senior. And we'll also have a FSID and scholarship day. Another thing that is going to be really important is our junior meeting. So for the class of 2023 in the spring of 2022, so the spring of your junior semester, we are going to be asking you to schedule an appointment with your school counselor so that we can have a junior meeting with you. Um, counselors will cover graduation requirements, post-secondary planning, career information, and more. Um, meetings will be tailored to each individual's goals that they are they have for themselves, whether that be attending a four year college or attending a technical college or going into the military. We want this meeting to be about you and talking about what you see for your future and your goals. Meetings will be in person and parents and guardians are definitely allowed um, to come to those. They're not required, but you're definitely welcome to attend. Something new this year that we are implementing are ninth and 10th grade minute meetings. This is for the class of 2024 and 2025. So this is going to happen in October and also in the spring of 2022. So counselors will come and have many individual meetings with each student in the ninth and 10th grade. And these meetings will serve as a catalyst for the future meetings that we want to have with these students, with their junior meetings and their senior meetings, or whether they're coming in for something different. Um, we want to build that relationship between the counselor and the student so that we can help them achieve their goals and achieve success that they see themselves having in high school. Um, Hey everyone, my name is Miss Nelson. I have last names R through Z and I will be talking a little bit about promotion requirements. So um, credits are earned by passing each course. Um, of course, our the lowest grade a student can get and still pass is a 70. Anything below that is an F and there's no um, credit given. And depending on the class, they may have to retake that at some point. Um, you are promoted by grade level. And this is something that a lot of students um, kind of lose track of. In Infinite Campus, it'll say that they're uh, still a ninth grader, but it's really their third year. So I really want you guys to pay attention to this part. Um, it is by, your promotion is by grade, or promoted by grade level. So in order to move from freshman to sophomore year, you must have six credits. It can be any six credits. Um, Junior year is where it gets a little bit more tricky. So in order to be a, a true junior, um, you need to have 13 credits, at least 13 credits. And that includes two ELA classes. So hopefully it'll be ninth and 10th grade lit, one math course, one science, and one social studies. Ideally, all of our juniors should have two of each one, but we do know that there's some hiccups along the way every so often. So that is the minimum to be um, considered a junior. And then to be considered a senior, you need to have 18 or more credits. Typically by the time our seniors get to senior year, they usually have more than 18 credits. But again, that's just our minimum. Following that are graduation requirements. So a minimum of 24 is required for graduation. Um, however, our students are taking a total of eight classes each year. So they should ideally end up with 32. Um, those 24 would include four um, credits of language arts, four math credits, 
four science credits and four social studies credits. Um, three pathway courses are required, so that is one full pathway. So think um, the business pathway, the healthcare pathway, course, band, art, um, among some more. Health, one credit of health and PE is required unless your student is taking the JRTC pathway. Um, and then if they have three credits of JRTC, they are kind of exempt from that health and PE um, credit requirement. And then also four general electives are um, just the minimum. Again, our students should end up with a little bit more than four electives, but ideally that's what they should be ending on. Um, last but not least, um, uh, two world language required world language credits are required for students who want to go to a four-year school in the state of Georgia. That's not required for our graduation. However, um, a lot of our seniors who do want to go to a four-year school have two um, Spanishes, two Frenches. Um, computer science can sometimes um, count for that as well. And I know that we're doing uh, American Sign Language this year, so that will also count for students. Credit recovery. So, like I said before, some students aren't necessarily at that um, full credit total that we want them to be at. Some do have to do credit recovery. Um, so a lot of our students will um, become transfer credit students at Foothill. So they are not actually full-time students at Foothills, but they are rec recovering credit there. So to recover one full credit is $150. And to recover a half credit is $75. So a lot of times when our students come from other counties, they may come in with half credits, so they'll only pay that $75. A lot of our students here will actually end up paying that one, full $150 because we only offer full credits here. Um, please see your counselor if you need a recommendation form. Um, it's better to go ahead and get this out of the way now instead of um, showing up your senior year and realizing you still need a credit, um, then we're kind of scrambling to get you ready for graduation. So we want to go ahead and have those conversations early with you. Um, there's an appointment with Foothills to begin working on courses. Um, that's part of the process. Um, but definitely just pay attention to those deadlines. Foothills will create deadlines for you to make sure that you stay on track. Um, but of course, we need them. Um, oh, we need them transferred over to us so that we can add them to your transcript. We are starting to look at some more after school and summer school opportunities for students at WBHS um, for no for no cost. So please be on the lookout for more information about that. If we are trying to get your credits quickly, Foothills is an already set up process um, that you're more than welcome to go ahead and start. Graduation testing requirements. So the Georgia milestones last year, we know with COVID, everything got a bit wonky, but this year they are back and they're, um, from my understanding, going to count the same as they did in the past, um, really about 20%. Um, so when when it comes to 11th grade lit, you will still take the milestone. A lot of our students who are dual enrollment students will end up taking American literature through dual enrollment. However, they are still required to take that milestone even though they're taking a college level course. Um, other milestones include algebra, um, biology, and US history. So for our ninth grade students, we want all of our students to have a plan. We um, In the next couple of slides, we designate what each grade level should be working on right now. So for our ninth graders, please, please go ahead and meet with your school counselor. Uh, you are just as important as our seniors that are leaving us in May. You just got here. We want to make sure that we can put a face to a name and get to know you personally. Um, so we definitely want to meet with you, go over your classes, your goals, um, and make sure we make a plan to help you along the way. We want you to make sure that you're setting up your own student goals. Um, studies have shown when we set a goal for ourselves, we're more likely to follow through with it because it's something that's important to us. Um, so check on your schoolwork regularly. And, um, sometimes, you know, life gets crazy. We fall behind on our deadlines and teachers are going to do their best to work with you. But sometimes we need to make sure that we're staying on track and getting our, our work in. Um, talk about how to get a how to get involved outside of outside of school, outside of class. Um, start investing in our community. Um, this community this community cares a lot about our high school. We want to make sure that we are um, representing our high school well, but also giving back. And some 
uh, the PSAT 8-9 is happening for our freshmen this year. Um, it will be taking place on October 13th, a Wednesday during school. And we really encourage our um, freshmen to go ahead and get registered for that. I believe today is the last day for registration, so please get that in or contact your school counselor and let them know, hey, I haven't registered, but I really want to take it and we'll get you set up and squared away. In the spring, we really want you guys starting to think about what you want to take in your sophomore year and go ahead and start looking into those colleges and tech schools. It's never too early if that's something you're interested in. Like I said before, making a goal is going to help you get there a little bit sooner. Um, see how much you need for college. It's, I mean, if you start as a freshman saving and looking into your scholarships and grants and things like that, you're probably going to be in a lot better shape um, come your senior year. And go ahead and make your summer plans um, in the spring, make some meaningful activities, whether that's going on um, a trip where you serve in your community, just hanging out with your family, growing closer with your friends, um, whatever that means for you, go ahead and do that. We want you guys to relax and take a break during the summer, but also think of things that can help you further your goals. Our 10th graders, um, very similar in the fall, go ahead and set those goals. Hopefully you've met your school counselor by now. If you haven't, be sure to do that. Um, get involved, like every year is important, especially your 9th, 10th, and 11th grade year. During your senior year, yes, it's, a, it's very important to pass during your senior year, obviously, um, but colleges, jobs, military, internships, whatever your plan is afterwards, they're really going to focus on your 9th through 11th grade years because that's all that's complete. Your senior year is still in progress. Um, it could change at any given moment, but from what they can see, your 9th, 10th, and 11th grade years are set in stone. So please make sure you're getting involved in things. Make sure you're keeping up with your work. Go ahead and brainstorm those schools that you want to um, apply to when you are a senior. And um, the PSAT and MSQT, is um, a form of the, P of the PSAT that 10th and 11th graders will take. 10th graders, you take it for free this year, so you'll be taking that on October 13th during the day. Um, so no worries, you don't have to register for that at all. We've already got you signed up. Um, and please start exploring careers and majors. What do you think you're good at? What do you think you'd be interested in? What do you think you can do for a long amount of time and be happy um, in the spring? Start visiting colleges. You're more than welcome to do that um, during the school day. It is an excused absence, but you can also do it um, during our breaks. I think we have a break almost every month, so you definitely have time. Um, start building that college list. Again, you should be looking at college costs, tuition, books, housing fees, whatever that, that means for you. Um, and start discussing your next year's classes. A lot of schools like Georgia, Georgia Tech, are looking at you taking most challenging courses in your school building. So go ahead and if you think like, oh, I think I'm ready for an honors levels class, or maybe I might be ready for an AP class, talk with the, your teachers, with your parents, with your guardians, with your school counselor, and let's make sure we make a schedule that works best for you. And again, we want you to have a good summer. We want you to make meaningful memories and do meaningful things. So please start planning that out as well. Our juniors, again, you're going to be meeting with your school counselor um, specifically in the spring for your junior meeting, but you can go ahead and meet with us now for anything, of course. Um, again, set your goals. If you have time, please shadow um, professionals. I know a lot of our students want to go into medicine and law um, and the big flashy careers, and that's fantastic, but you don't know until you get there. So definitely go ahead and shadow folks if you know anyone in those career, in career areas that you're interested in. Um, not only should you be taking the PSAT on October 13th, but don't forget, um, you'll have to register, register for that if you are a junior, but you should also be preparing to take the SAT or ACT. We encourage you guys to take that in the spring, so go ahead and start preparing in the fall, studying, talking with the seniors. They're all going through this process now, um, so definitely communicate with them and deepen your involvement. Again, if you're in this club and you're like, ooh, I might want to run for office, run for office, take that chance, because if you get that and it can go on your college resume, you're probably one more step ahead than the person who's also applying to that same school. In the spring, we're going to be doing junior meetings. We're going to kind of, hopefully you've been making your plan and you're going to come to us and be like, this is what I want to do, and but I don't know how to get there, so help me. Um, and we can work with you on that in your junior meeting. We're going to refine your college list. So you might have 20 schools and you may have 20 reach schools, and we need to narrow that down to five or eight schools and make sure there's some matches in there for you. So 
And we'll definitely work on that together. Um, again, you should be taking a college entrance exam, whether it's SAT, ACT, Accuplacer. We'll talk more about that as well. Um, again, solidify your next year's classes, research scholarships. Right now, by this time, you should know how much it's going to cost you to get there. And so we need to go ahead and figure out how we're going to pay for that. Attend the college fairs. Attend the college um, open house tours. Um, you are just as important as that senior, and it's your time to try to figure out where you're going to go next. Make the most of your call of your summer. Go visit those colleges again. Do some research. There are plenty of conferences around for high school students who just want to gather together and learn and um, just enjoy each other's company. So definitely um, be on the lookout for those as well. So what's next? Again, we're going to cover a lot of this in your junior and your senior meetings. Um, but go ahead and start making that plan. Do I want to go to a four-year school um, where you earn a bachelor's? Do you want to go to a two-year or junior college where you're going to earn an associate's degree? Do you want to go to tech school um, where you can earn an associate's degree, but you can also earn a diploma program uh, or a diploma, sorry, or a certificate? Um, do you want to go to the military? Uh, which branch do you want to serve in? And do you want to go straight to work? And if you do, hey, that's A-OK, -okay, and that's so exciting in any way you choose is going to work. We just need to make sure that you know what you want to do next. You guys should be participating in youth science over this year um, where you can still kind of see what you may be interested in. You can access that already through your student portal. So what do colleges consider? Obviously, we know the notables. Great. GPA, rigor of courses, what classes you're taking. Um, your SAT scores. So normally that's a direct factor. And um, honestly, due to that, a lot of schools are like, you know, we want to get rid of that. Some schools are like, that doesn't really tell us much about you. And others are like, it's really just a benchmark. Um, so definitely, if you know you want to go to school A, but school A is test optional, go ahead and note that now. So you may not have to take the test, or if your scores aren't as strong, you know that, okay, this isn't really going to affect me. Other factors are your essays and personal statements. So how well you write and how well you are, how good you are at telling a story. Recommendations. A lot of times um, schools or even employers will ask us for recommendations as as counselors. So we do, again, it's important for us to know you, but also um, help us um, better write a recommendation for you. Those activities and accomplishments, again, get involved. Um, a lot of schools want to see that you're more than just a bookworm or you're more than just a test grade. Um, demonst that demonstrated interest, so how we said before, please go visit these colleges, talk to the representatives that come here. They're going to be here a lot for the seniors, but if they have time, they'll chat with you too. Um, and that way they know like, ooh, so-and-so talked to me on this day and they were really interested. We really need to remember when their information comes in. Class rank also um, takes a big role um, and also interviews. Some schools do interview to see if they want you to come to their school, if you're a good fit for them. So um, definitely keep track of those. So when we build a college list, we definitely want to make sure that we are, we fit the school. And I'm not saying like, oh, you better have their GPAs or you better have um, the same idealism. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying Consider the following, the campus size, location, cost, what they offer, the activities on site. So let's say like for me, for example, I went to a really small high school, but I ended up going to the University of Georgia. I didn't do any research on it. So it was a big culture shock for me. And I wanted to go home almost every day. So I don't want that to happen to you. So when you're looking at colleges, consider how many students are there. And if you wanna be in a place like Winder or if you wanna be in a place like Atlanta, what are, what are you looking for? What best suits you? And on top of that, you definitely wanna think about the cost. So if you look at your tuition versus the scholarships that you're offered versus the financial aid that you're offered, how much is it really gonna be for you? If you really wanna be a biology major and your dream school does not have biology, I don't know why they want it, but maybe they don't. You want to make sure that you're going to a school that's actually going to suit your, your goals in the future. And if you really love Georgia football 
and your school doesn't have Georgia football, well, that might not be the school for you. So if you are really looking forward to participating in Greek life or clubs, intramurals, um, debate team, whatever you're looking for, make sure that your school's offering it for you. So again, back to those college entrance exams, um, go ahead and start planning freshmen, sophomores, juniors, you're gonna be looking at this next in the spring. So please go ahead and start doing that research, taking the time to study um, and figuring out which exam's best for you. So the SAT and ACT are what we usually hear about. Um, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, um, but there, there are more tests out there too. So for four-year colleges, um, the SAT and ACT are the bread and butter. Uh, we normally recommend that you take both and that you take it early. So juniors, we're saying in the spring, you should be taking at least one of these. Um, if, you can, if you can afford to take both and want to take both, please do, and then figure out which one you are stronger in. Um, there is no preference for colleges. If you've heard that, let's just go ahead and clear that out of the way. Um, schools aren't saying, oh, you took the ACT, so I'm not taking you. Or they're, oof, you took the SAT, so that's not for us. They're not doing that. As long as you take a test and you have a score, they're going to look at it. Um, when you register for the exam and you take it, it's going to ask you what schools you want it sent to. Go ahead and know what schools those are because it's free to send it at that point. If you take two on to send it, you're going to have to pay some money. So definitely go in there knowing what you're looking for. For technical schools, um, the SAT and ACT are accepted, but you can also take the AccuBlazer, and that's an untimed multiple choice test. Um, a little less pressure than those SATs and ACTs, but still really important. Um, and you guys can do well on any of them. So definitely be doing that research. If you're interested in the military, the ASVAB is required. We'll be offering that in the spring. Even if you're not interested in the military, it's a good careers interest inventory. Um, kind of tell you what you may be good at. So if you have that time, please go ahead and take it. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Corey Peppers, school counselor for last names um, for students A through E, and I'll pick up on this part of the presentation. So talking about those college entrance exams um, right here with the ACT, uh, the philosophy for this test uh, really is one that rewards students with a strong grasp of material and content knowledge that is being taught in school at the time. Um, so as we look at that more of an achievement exam, uh, the signups would be making an account through the actstudent.org. Score ranges between 1 to 36. Um, with this test, there's no penalty for wrong answers. So what we tell students is if you're taking it, you're running out of time on a section, just mark something because you're only getting points towards what is uh, scored correctly. Uh, we do have waivers that are available uh, for students that qualify for free and reduced lunch. There's a different process for qualifying the school year um, since we do have a grant um, that everybody is, is having free lunch, so we need another way. If you go speak to either Ms. Long in the Career Resource Office or you come uh, speak to us in the Counseling Office, we can kind of help you out with that process. Um, but you can also see what the ACT covers. Um, there is a science section, however, it's not anything that's directly formula related. It's more about critical thinking. At this point, you will see uh, the dates that are left um, for this school year and or for this calendar year and the prices that are there for the ACT. Uh, definitely, you know, look at the registration deadlines. You don't want to incur that $36 late fee um, by, you know, uh, doing something after that registration deadline. Um, but take a look, plan ahead. Um, if you need those waivers, again, can't stress enough planning ahead because you need to uh, go through that process of um, qualifying, then getting the fee waiver, so then you can register um, and have time to get that free exam. The SAT, um, another one of those college entrance exams uh, that can get you in anywhere, uh, the same as the ACT. Uh, collegeboard.org, the philosophy here, rewarding logic, creative thinking, problem solving, uh, we look at this as more as an aptitude exam. How much have you been exposed to the content um, that's related to the SAT? Scoring range here between 400 and uh, 1600. And uh, there's no penalty on this one as well uh, for any wrong answers. So basically, 
mark every answer if you're running out of time. Uh, there's no guessing penalty. Uh, content, you know, math and reading focused. Definitely a lot of vocabulary driven um, on the SAT. So, you know, your prep for this, uh, you know, goes a long way. And again, that same scenario with waivers. As we look here, uh, the cost uh, up there at the top, Winderboro High School is actually a test site for the SAT. So those August through May 7th uh, dates, you could actually find us as a test site. For the ACT, you may actually need to, you know, look at a surrounding county, um, either, you know, go into Walton, go into Clark, Gwinnett, or uh, perhaps Jackson. The AccuPlacer, um, this is something that the technical schools will need as their entrance exam. It's their direct uh, method. Technical schools will accept SAT or ACT scores, but if you're going to technical, you only need the AccuPlacer. It's multiple choice, untimed, computerized. Uh, typically what a student would do is apply to the technical school they're interested in and then take this test on their campus. Again, it's math um, and reading. Uh, that's the subjects that it covers and revolves around. Um, at some point, you know, if you're looking at dual enrollment, you may have taken the AccuPlacer. If you're within like our dual enrollment system with Lanier Tech and continue uh, through that in college, there may be a way to kind of use that test score that you have if it qualifies um, you as a student to take those core units. Otherwise, you may have to retake um, the AccuPlacer when you apply. The PSAT, um, when we look at this test, you know, it really does uh, go towards um, students that are preparing, you know, to take the SAT at some point. Uh, you definitely kind of are that po college prep oriented student. Um, the test date is October 13th. Signups are through My School Bucks. We're going to offer this free to all 10th grade students this year. So if you're a 10th grader, you're here that day, you're going to take the PSAT. Um, usually takes up about first to second period. Um, during that day because we're testing a lot of students. Um, ninth graders, the fee is $15. Juniors, uh, there's a $20 fee, but there are fee waivers available if you go through that process, just like I've discussed about um, fee waivers through either counseling office or um, speaking to Ms. Long. Why to take it? Again, it's great practice. Uh, you know, nothing like taking a three-hour exam, um, you know, but taking it. So this practice will get students um, used to that format, um, that time frame. Uh, scholarship money is available for juniors who uh, have a great performance on this. Um, also, one of the big things is that it can uh, help identify AP potential. So when we get those score reports back, it will actually show us where students may uh, can gravitate towards the class and pick that up either there, you know, sophomore, junior, or senior year um, through an AP course. Uh, registration deadline is actually September 15th. So that is an update um, for that spot down there at the bottom, so September 15th. The ASVAB is something that kind of comes up uh, for students as they go through uh, school. Not a, an entrance exam um, for college, but could be an entrance exam for the uh, military as far as what branch that you're looking at. It helps uh, identify some of the different skills um, that are needed within the branches of the military, so where you may be actually placed um, once you go in to active duty. Also, students can take this uh, just as career exploration. So if you just want to know a little bit more about yourself and what you might be geared towards, um, you know, as a, as a professional, once you kind of uh, graduate high school and kind of look into that, um, March, 20, March 2022, uh, that would be uh, when we're looking to have this test date. See Ms. Long as we kind of get closer into spring semester for the signups. Otherwise, you could also um, look up more information or if you're involved with a recruiter um, for the military, then they will also allow you to take that exam. Khan Academy is uh, one thing we like to highlight through these parent info nights. A lot of you know teachers are using it. Parents are already notified. Students should know it by now. Um, but it is free online tutoring. Um, so one of the connections again with like the test prep um, and um, college entrance exams is that there is free personalized test prep for the SAT. Outside of that, if you can see here on the snapshot that we have, I mean students that need help in algebra, geometry, 
um, Algebra 2. I mean, you've got AP coursework here. Um, you know, anything through history, computer science, there's just a lot of great information um, on here. So it's free um, for parents and students to make an account. So I definitely recommend um, Khan Academy just as an ultimate resource um, as we're going through. Something to hit and kind of discuss, um, kind of as underclassmen won't directly pertain to you uh, just yet, but a lot of parents and students are curious about financial aid as it um, you know, talks about college planning and things. Uh, GeorgiaFutures.org is a great place to start. Um, that's our state site. You get a lot of great information about the HOPE program, but you've also got a lot of tools and resources there uh, to do a scholarship search or to find out like that financial aid 101 um, there. Uh, also from Georgia Futures, Georgia Student Finance Commission on uh, October 19th, maybe in a virtual event where we actually have a Georgia Student Finance Commission rep come uh, or speak to us again virtually or, or uh, in person, um, but they'll discuss a lot of the, the different financial aid um, tools and uh, benefits either by completing the FAFSA forms, uh, just general questions that uh, they're given a lot of times so look out for that night. Uh, bigfuture.org is something that College Board uh, puts out. We also like this as a good resource. Um, great uh, information for parents and students. You can do a college uh, search through that. Um, also, those cost estimators and loan information that are that are on that site, you know, kind of gets everybody oriented um, to where you need to be for financial aid. Um, overall, you know, looking at the college websites. Uh, would be probably the best place, you know, to get your your direct information as they'll, you know, put their cost of attendance down. Um, so you kind of get that great snapshot of what it's going to actually cost um, your family maybe to to uh, go to that school or not. Um, the free application for federal student aid is one of the, the biggest ways to qualify for financial aid. Um, the process really begins as a senior. So right now, not really anything that an underclassman would do, but good uh, to be aware of what that is. Um, and we have like FAFSA completion nights, we'll have that November 18th. So it won't be anything that underclassmen will uh, attend, but just for y'all's knowledge that we have those where we help uh, parents and students out. Hope and Zell Miller, definitely something that are uh, more familiar here in our state uh, with when we talk about financial aid. The scholarship um, specifically goes to four-year colleges. So the HOPE scholarship, you need to have a minimum of a 3.0 um, GPA by the time that you graduate. And that uh, GPA is all academic. So those core subjects, uh, language arts, social studies, math, science, as well as academic electives um, like foreign language. You have to meet the HOPE rigor requirements. Um, there are academic requirements that students must meet. And this will pay uh, approximately 85% of your tuition at those public institutions. This is only towards your tuition, not room, board, um, you know, lunch or um, uh, meal plans, books, and things like that. It's just towards uh, the cost of classes. Um, the main thing that I'm telling students is, you know, you can start your senior year at a 3.0 and you can lose hope throughout that entire school year if you don't perform well in your classes. Um, so, you know, you can you can gain or lose hope within a year. Same thing, I can have a senior start um, a school year with a 2.9 or 2.8 and earn hope through that last school year. So definitely, you know, um, be cognizant of your GPAs and classes, especially in those academic areas. So you're qualifying for free money when you graduate. Zell Miller is the top tier, again, to four-year colleges and universities, a minimum of a 3.7 academic GPA. And then uh, you must have either a 1,200 on the SAT or 26 on the ACT in one sitting. There's no super scoring um, with those uh, test dates. Hope rigor requirements uh, also apply, but this is 100% of your tuition that will be covered at public institutions. Um, both are awarded towards private schools. But again, the amounts may vary um, just because they're not a public institution. They don't have to go by the same requirements of fulfilling the HOPE um, scholarship or Zell Miller. To give you a snapshot about that HOPE academic um, rigor requirements, so uh, students must graduate with four credits of academic rigor, and that is four in any category. Um, so if a student's particularly gifted in foreign language, you could actually take you know, Spanish two, Spanish three, Spanish four, 
and AP Spanish. And that is your four classes that would uh, go towards academic rigor. In this example that we have on the side, if a student were to take their Algebra two, Chemistry, Human Anatomy, and Spanish two, that's their academic rigor. A lot of times students think, oh, I have to take uh, honors and AP classes at this point just to get hope. That's not the case. You definitely uh, can do it by just taking, uh, you know, regular college prep or regular courses here um, in school. Um, so if you ever have any questions about that, definitely talk to your uh, counselor and we can uh, clear up where you're, where you're at on your track um, to earning these uh, qualifications. Another thing just to highlight would be the Hope and Zell Miller uh, grants. Um, this applies to two-year institutions, our technical schools. Um, so there's no minimum GPA for the HOPE grant. So um, graduate, get your diploma, enroll in those technical schools. All you have to do is maintain a 2.0. That is 70s or higher. Um, and you can get that free money. It covers a portion of tuition. Uh, typically, that's about 80% at that technical school. So again, that's still a great um, opportunity for students to get um, free classes or close to free classes. Zell Miller, there's no, again, high school GPA uh, minimum. However, once you've started uh, the college program, if you have a 3.5 after the first semester that you're in that technical school program, they'll repay you what you paid out of pocket the first semester and pay 100% of the tuition moving forward um, in that certificate or diploma program. Um, Hope Career Grant, we kind of mentioned it at the bottom there. Um, this applies to students uh, who are enrolled in majors that are aligned with industries that Georgia say we need more skilled workers in. Um, you know, for example, like commercial truck drivers, uh, if you're doing that program, you can get a thousand more dollars going towards your tuition. Um, if you're interested in becoming a welder, um, you could get $500 more um, towards your tuition. So if you qualify for one of those programs um, that we need more skilled workers in here in the state of Georgia, Hope Career Grant could also give you money um, to go for free uh, college. Um, Ms. Long is our Career Center Coordinator, so the process starts with her. Um, dual enrollment funding covers tuition, fees, and required textbooks, so there are no out-of-pocket costs for students unless there are course-specific costs, which is pretty pretty uncommon. Um, students are eligible but must meet institutional standards for admission. That means that each institution um, sets their own admissions standards and those vary from school to school. So if you're interested in learning more about dual enrollment or getting the process started, what you would need to do is contact Ms. Long in the Career Center to express interest. She'll give you some paperwork to get started. You'll fill out the dual enrollment application. Um, if you haven't taken entrance exams, you'll need to take those. You may be able to meet admissions requirements. Otherwise, she can talk to you about those requirements um, and help you with the application to the institution. Um, if Once you're accepted, you'll meet with your counselor for advisement and class selection. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that the courses that you're taking are going to make sense with your academic plan and also your post-secondary plan. And then if you have specific questions about admission or course detail questions or whatever, then that would be a time when you would need to contact the college directly to ask those questions. Um, and once you're scheduled in those classes, then you can bring those, bring your schedule to Winder Barrow High School so we can make sure that the courses get added to your schedule here. So dual enrollment is, like I said, it's a great opportunity, but you need to make sure that it's going to um, be a good fit for the college level, that you are going to be a good fit for college level work and that you're going to be prepared for the expectations for college level work. Um, the expectations for college level work can vary a good bit from high school level work and the number of assignments that you can complete, that you have to complete may vary. Um, so just need to make sure that you're ready so that when you are starting to build your college transcript through dual enrollment, that you are building a strong college transcript and also that your courses, um, that the grades are gonna look good on your high school transcript as well. 
So the other thing that you want to make sure is that you're thinking that you think about is that um, what do you want to do after high school? We need to make sure that the courses make sense for you and that you are making yourself competitive for college after high school. Some schools prefer AP classes over dual enrollment classes. Um, we want to make sure that we advise you to take the correct dual enrollment classes based on the institution you want to attend after high school. So we have a lot of conversations about those sorts of things to make sure that you're doing the right thing. So SIMS Academy is uh, becoming more of a career academy and will house Vero dual enrollment options kind of moving forward. We have a partnership with Linear Tech, so courses through Linear Tech, um, for the most part, will be offered through SIMS Academy. There may be a few um, exceptions to that, but just plan on moving forward that dual enrollment classes through Linear Tech will be housed at SIMS. Um, other things to consider are Transportation, if you are applying to a school like UGA or UNG or Georgia Gwinnett, then you would have to provide your transportation there. Um, we also need to make sure that you think about your other responsibilities um, outside of Winder Barrow High School, extracurriculars, your job schedule, and that sort of thing. If you need to send transcripts, these are just a few reminders for you. You can request transcripts from Ms. Sheets. So if you're applying for dual enrollment, you need to send a transcript, request a transcript from Ms. Sheets. You can come by um, and see her. You can email her. You can also go to the Winder Bearer High School Counseling website and submit a request for a transcript through our appointment scheduler. Um, please give her at least 24 hours notice um, before, you know, she will be sending that because it does. she does have a lot of responsibility, so make sure you give her uh, at least 24 hours notice. Um, in state schools, we typically submit transcripts through Georgia Futures. Again, Ms. Sheets will do that. It's a free process that we offer, um, and it's immediate. For in-state or out-of-state schools that are not through Georgia Futures, um, you can request a transcript from Ms. Sheets. Um, if there's a hard copy that needs to be sent, then she can send a hard copy and mail it. If you are a first-generation college-bound student, so if you are going to be the first person in your family to attend college, then we are trying to offer um, a program especially for you because we want you to feel supported and know what you're doing once you get to college or when you're applying to college. So we are offering a senior first generation college bound group this semester, but we'll also be offering one for juniors in the spring. So if you're a junior, you're going to be a first generation college bound student. That means you're the first person in your family to go to, school, to college. Um, then please let your counselor know and we'll try to get you into uh, one of our first generation college bound groups. Um, our school counseling intern, Ms. Dean, will be the person running the group during uh, the fall. Um, and she'll also be doing it in the spring. If we have a lot of students who are interested, we may run multiple groups. One thing that's new this year for juniors is that starting July 1st of this year, students entering or transfer into 11th grade have to provide proof of an MCV4 shot unless your first dose was received uh, on or after your 16th birthday. So we have to have updated shot records for your students. Um, the immunization form uh, is the 3231 form. Um, that your student needs, and then this can be turned into Ms. Sheets in the counseling office. Um, one of the things that we're going to be providing this year, we're going to be working with community partners to provide a community event um, on suicide awareness and prevention. This is something that's really important to us. Um, if you have been, if you're aware in the community, we have lost students to suicide. Um, last year, we unfortunately lost some middle school students to suicide, and we want to make sure that families are aware of signs and um, things that we can do to try to prevent this from happening. So we are having two speakers, Dr. Latrina Slater and, Dr. and, and Adam Rollerson from Laurelwood will be participating um, in this. It will be a, an online event on September 29th at 6.30. Uh, this will be a Zoom meeting. If you're not able to attend live on September 29th at 6.30, then you can watch a recorded version of the session and we'll be sending out a link for that to, um, pretty soon. Hope you can join us for that.
So one of the things that we have in the counseling office is we do have Google Classroom codes. So if you would like to stay connected with things in the counseling office information, please make sure that your child joins um, the Google Classroom for their class. So these are the these are the links for the Google Classroom. Talk to your child, let them know about this, and then they can stay connected with information from counseling. You can also stay school connected. You can get updates on Facebook, on Twitter, and also on Instagram. So follow us on social media to stay connected with all the things that are happening at Winder Barrow. Just a few things to kind of keep in mind. Um, attendance is so important, and this is really difficult, especially right now with COVID and students being quarantined, but please make sure that your children are here every day um, and engaged in classrooms. If they are out, it's important to turn in notes and for students to make sure that they make up work. So they need to have conversations with their teachers. Always make sure that your, your children are turning in their work. You can keep track of this on the parent portal. Students should keep track of this on the student portal. Um, make sure that you are communicating with teachers. If you have any questions, you can reach out to counselors. We are happy to help you as well. Um, you know, you can make appointments with us. If you need a parent teacher conference, you can reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you with that. Um, and just make sure that you're staying up to date with important dates. And again, you can view lots of dates and activities on the website and on social media. So we hope this presentation has been helpful to you. Um, if you need anything from the counseling office, please reach out. We are happy to help. We always love working with students and parents and are, are willing to do whatever we can to support your child. Um, we hope that you and your children have a wonderful school year. Thanks so much.